Good morning, Kitchissippi. There is a little autumn chill in the air on this sunny Saturday, September the 2nd. This is a video version of the 106th Kitchissippi Ward newsletter. I put the newsletter out by email about once a week or so. It has a lot more uh, links, details about the issues that we'll be covering. If you are not subscribed, I'd encourage you to do so today at kitchissippiward.ca. First in the newsletter this week, a reminder that we are hosting an open house to take a look at the site plan for 175 Carruthers. That's the uh, Hopner development that is going in between Sterling and Carruthers on Scott Street. Phase 1 is in. Phase 2 has been approved by Council, but the developer has brought a site plan uh, forward that sees a much bulkier building. I have uh, some concerns about that. I know adjacent residents do as well that open house to take a look provide feedback is going to be held on september the 13th from 6 30 until 8 30 at the la roche park field house uh, also in the newsletter this week a bit of an update on the 1960 scott street that's the trailhead proposal that was recently approved by council at 22 stories the builder has come forward with a site plan that actually adds two more stories to that building it's all with within the prescribed or the zoned height limit of 76 meters but within that space I believe they're eliminating some of the commercial to add two more stories of residential. In order to accomplish that there is a zoning measure that is required buried in what is called a, a, an anomalies report it's an omnibus zoning amendment that will be coming forward soon that will strip out specific reference to 22 stories in the zoning. I'm going back and forth with staff and residents about what this means. Uh, the builder has asserted that some of the changes they're making, including bringing the building uh, further away from the adjacent residential, is um, a, a good move and will reduce some of the traffic associated with the building. But I'm not entirely comfortable that the process has been followed properly to this point. Uh, take a look in the newsletter for details about uh, that site plan and zoning amendment coming up. Also this week, a quick update. I was in to see the ambassador for the Royal Thai government. Residents are probably aware that at 180 uh, Island Park Drive, uh, the Royal Thai government is seeking approval to add office use as part of a rebuild of their diplomatic premises at that, um, uh, at that site. I and residents and a number of people with whom I've spoken uh, consider that adding office use as a permanent permitted use on that site is going to set a bad precedent for the rest of Island Park Drive. I'll be working with the uh, diplomatic staff there, with city staff, uh, with residents to see how we can resolve this. Also this week, uh, some reminders uh, with respect to the Committee of Adjustment. I did run through these uh, in the last video newsletter, but on September the 6th, the committee is going to be hearing several Kitchissippi properties. At 652 Tweedsmuir, uh, the owner is seeking to demolish the existing dwelling, construct a two-story semi-detached. Uh, they're seeking consent to divide the property. At 481 Briarwood, the owner is seeking to demolish the existing structure construct a two-story detached dwelling. They're looking for variances in order to be able to do that associated with reduced lot width and area, reduced side yard setback, uh, an increase in building height as well as reduced front yard setback. At 219 Royal, uh, the owner is seeking to demolish the existing structure and, go figure, subdivide the property into two separate parcels with variances sought for reduced lot width and area. And the hearing that was adjourned from the previous Committee of Adjustment hearing with respect to 385 Dominion will be heard. Uh, there again, the owner is seeking to demolish the existing structure and to put up a new semi-detached house. Uh, somehow, there are no no committee of adjustment hearings on September the um, no Kitchissippi related items on the committee agenda of September the 20th. Uh, a bunch of other things in the newsletter to update you about. I think one of the key ones is uh, some changes to Bayview Station. Right now there is a stop 
eastbound number 2A that is at the top of the bridge. As part of the Trinity development that is being proposed uh, just on the other side of the tracks of where I am right now, uh, they're going to connect that new development to the station. In order to accomplish that, they're closing that site that is at the top of the bridge and relocating the stop to the corner of Bayview and Albert, Bayview and Scott, uh, just to the west of me. Buses will stop at that new stop. Pedestrians will then come in order to get to the O-Train station on the path that will be reopened behind me here, past Tom Brown, underneath the um, bridges, around the railhead to get uh, to the platform. It's a significant detour. Staff figured that that will add about three minutes onto the existing two minute trip where people are currently getting off at that stop above uh, on the bridge and then walking down the ramp. Uh, Councillor McKenney and I had myself have some questions about uh, whether or not that is the only alternative that we can have in order to accomplish that construction. Uh, stay tuned for more details. Also in the newsletter, uh, pop-up office hours are coming up. It looks like my next one will be on September the 14th. I'll be at the bridgehead that is at uh, 317 McRae. That's next to the farm boy from 1 until 4 p.m. Uh, another interesting LRT related note, I have extended a one month exemption from the noise bylaw. It's essentially an extension of the exemption that I have already concurred with uh, to allow night work in order to put track down through the LRT line. Uh, one piece of that that I wanted to particularly highlight, part of the rail work will now start to include what they call rail de-stressing. When they put that continuously welded rail down, it's stressed. Um, in order to de-stress it, they have a machine that uses hammers to knock the rail. It creates a bit of a shock wave that travels through the rail uh, in order to take the stress out of it. That will probably be audible in the neighborhood. I have satisfied myself that uh, the work does need to be done at night. It does mean that on two occasions for the uh, length of the one month uh, exemption, there will be noise that will probably be audible through the neighborhood. That machine uh, has to make one pass of the tracks, knocking it as it goes with these steel hammers. The machine travels at a walking pace, about one meter per second. So on one night in each direction, we will probably hear that noise in the neighborhood. Staff had asked me for a three month exemption. I've concurred with just the one. Sometime in the course of the next three months or so, they are expecting to undertake that de-stressing work. I've asked staff to keep me in the loop when they have greater precision about when that might be done I will pass it on a uh, number of other uh, fun items in the newsletter this week. McKellar Park is gearing up for its fall festival. That's going to be held on September the 24th from 10.30 until 2.30. Uh, also, there is um, an interesting session that I'm going to be facilitating at City Hall in my capacity with Crime Prevention Ottawa, taking a look at brain injury and fetal alcohol disorder spectrum um, uh, and the justice system. Details in the newsletter that session, a speaker's event is going to be held on September the 21st at City Hall. Taste of Wellington is fast approaching. That's going to be on Saturday, September the 16th. There's going to be beer, the usual food samples. There will be performances, lots of family-friendly activities throughout the Wellington West area. Take a look at the newsletter for a link for further details. We are just one week away from Porch Fest. I'm really pleased to be a sponsor of that. Uh, last year, over 50 porches uh, had uh, performers on them, uh, including uh, one who is uh, near and dear to my heart. On September the 9th, the uh, next edition of Porch Fest will be held. I've got a link in the newsletter to all the details. Uh, note, uh, the uh, job ad is still up for the Wellington West Business Improvement Area. They are seeking a new executive director to replace Zach Daler. Uh, that is a really exciting opportunity for uh, the right candidate. I'm more than happy to chat with anybody who might be thinking of applying. Do take a look at that job posting and 
consider uh, putting an application forward. I've also re uh, repeated in the newsletter this week a call for volunteers for the 24th Scouting Group. They run Cubs, Beavers, Scouts in our neighborhood. They have lots of opportunities to volunteer uh, over the course of the next year. Uh, also another uh, um, event of which I am a, a fervent supporter, the Grassroots Grannies are going to be holding this year's edition of the Ride to Turn the Tide. I'll be riding the uh, the last leg of them. That ride takes place on uh, September the 6th, 7th and 8th. It will wind up uh, at the uh, Bush Tucker in Westboro on that last day. Uh, they are 93% of their uh, fundraising goal. There's a link in the newsletter. Please take a look and consider putting them over the top. Uh, also, another event of which I'm a, a proud sponsor, the Bicycle Film Festival is going to be host, held on September the 9th. These are a series of um, uh, three programs, each with several short films, bicycle themed, uh, that is being presented by Enviro Center and is going to be held on September the 9th at St. Bridget Center for the Performing Arts. That is at 310 St. Patrick Street. Um, also in the newsletter, another reminder, the Transportation Equity Summit coming up. That is an event that's hosted by Enviro Center and the Healthy Transportation Coalition. That summit is going to be held on September the 22nd. I anticipate that I'll be uh, participating in a lot of that. Link in the newsletter. Um, also, and this is one of my favorite events of the year, uh, Family Services Ottawa, which provides such critical mental health care in our community, is hosting its annual fundraising music on a mission this is a wild night of music trivia fantastic silent auction uh, I'm looking forward to getting a table this year I am in it to win uh, I am also a patron along with uh, many other high-profile uh, Ottawans of the event that is going to be held on October the 27th I've got a link in the newsletter lots of sponsorship opportunities buy a table uh, to help support the critical work that Family Services Ottawa does here in town at City Hall next week, uh, none of the committees on which I sit are meeting, but there are some high profile ones for sure. Uh, the first of those is going to be the Finance and Economic Development Committee. It meets on Tuesday. There's a link to the agenda in the newsletter. It's taking a look at the 2017 operating and capital uh, budget status update. Uh, I'm sure many of you have seen in the media that we are once again in a, a deficit position. I think that was around $10.7 million worth. Uh, much of that due to the winter maintenance budget. Uh, the committee will hear that update on Tuesday. Uh, there is also going to be a transportation committee meeting that's going to be held on Wednesday. Uh, the key item there is really um, taking a look at uh, the parking and traffic traffic bylaw. Hundreds of changes are being proposed to make almost all of those very small and technical in nature in order to align our bylaw with the Ontario Highway Traffic Act and with the AODA accessibility requirements at the provincial level. They are replacing the bylaw. Multiple changes have been made as well for the past many years. I think the, uh, the most substantive change that will grab headlines in that new bylaw is um, the results of the survey with respect to to increasing the length of time you're allowed to park when there's no signage on a street from three hours until six. Uh, the surveys to which I pointed people in my last uh, newsletter have come out uh, overwhelmingly in favor of making that change. It is recommended. Transportation Committee will debate that on Wednesday. And then finally, uh, this week, Team Kitchissippi is in the office. Uh, it is a short week. We are busy. Um, I have a number of meetings coming up, all the usual things. An interesting meeting coming up with the uh, taking a look at Ottawa's waste management strategy. Uh, I'm taking a look with the builder at 175 Carruthers, some uh, work to do on the music strategy, uh, and also a look ahead with um, uh, some uh, advocates to uh, the environmental considerations in the 2018 budget. Also uh, going to be really pleased to welcome a new full-time staff member. Uh, that's an addition to our team into the office. Looking forward to uh, introducing to uh, her to you in the course of the next week. 
Listen, remember, uh, a lot of kids have gone back to school now. It was the first week back to school uh, here in Ottawa. Um, uh, many more are going to be starting back to school on Tuesday. Drive safe. Uh, it is, uh, it is uh, easy to get used to the uncongested roads and uh, a little bit of um, uh, easy commuting, but uh, the kids are back in school now. Uh, slow down. Please come to a full and complete stop at intersections. Do your shoulder checks and uh, certainly leave the phone alone. Kitchissippi, I hope you have a great week. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.